So what's your business worth? You know, that's a question we hear quite often from uh, cleaning business owners. You know, how much is my company worth? Um, you know, and it uh, depends. It really depends. Um, you know, uh, you're going to, the, the investor or the person that's going to buy is going to base everything off of profits. Uh, you know, it has to be the profits and they want to look at the structure of your business. Uh, can the business run without you? So, you know, the bottom line is that you can get more money for your business if it's not an owner-reliant business. And uh, that's really a fact. So, uh, for those people that are selling their companies that, that have an owner-reliant business, meaning that the owner has to be there in order for the business to survive, uh, you're not going to get much for your business. Uh, you know, sorry to say that, but it's but it's true. Um, so the best thing that you can do is uh, generally, if you decide to sell, hopefully it's not a fire sale uh, to where you got to sell quickly, because generally you want to plan at least three years out uh, to make sure that you can show steady growth uh, and get more systems in in uh, in place. So it's not a uh, an owner reliant business. Now I think in most cases you're not going to be able to succeed totally in the three years. Uh, you, you you know you could you couldn't uh, you know every, it, it all depends. It's different for everybody, but uh, you you might be able to complete it in three years to where it's uh, where it's a systems reliant business and the business is running without the owner. Um, and in the other cases that uh, you know it's a lot of work, no doubt about it. You know, I coach uh, uh, many cleaning business owners and I have uh, clients that are going through my business development course, which is all about developing systems and controls for your business. And it's not easy. It's a lot of work, you know, and every one of them will tell you that. So anyway, uh, when you're thinking about how much your uh, cleaning business is worth, uh, it could be anywhere from one to three times a multiplier. Generally, that's what the industry is, is you know, at. You know, of course... Uh, there's so many different factors, though, that that are eager, that will influence that number. But uh, you know, the higher the number, the better for you. Uh, so uh, you know, try to uh, have a business that uh, obviously you can run on itself um, and have good people in place, have a good team. Uh, you know, because these investors are going to look at that. Anybody that comes to you that's going to look at look at your business to purchase it is going to look at the profit. They're going to look at your books. They're going to go through them with a fine tooth comb. You know, they're going to go through each account that you have. It doesn't matter if it's commercial or residential. Uh, they're, they're going to want uh, some signed agreements, uh, you know, and contracts in place. That will be helpful. Uh, without them, you know, you don't have a whole lot, uh, really, that, uh, that whole lot of value that the investor may be thinking about. So, um make sure you have some of those things in place. It's kind of difficult for a residential home, uh, residential business because generally uh, homeowners aren't going to sign any agreement or contracts for the service that they're getting. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just something that you'll, you'll have to deal with. You, know, you can always put together some other type of agreements as, as, as far as the rules and regulations of your cleaning business if you're a residential cleaning company. You know, at least uh, you have some documentation stating that this person is wanting you to provide a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly service, you know, on a re reoccurring basis. Uh, another thing that would be really good for you to do is to uh, document each one of your accounts. So uh, I've actually got a, uh, a sheet that uh, you can use to do that, to where you're writing in the information of the account, uh, you know, how much you're making per square foot, or how much per hour, if you're selling them the consumables, uh, how long it's taking to clean, uh, how many cleaners you got assigned to the account, and you're really breaking it down because this is all information that the new owner is going to want to have. Uh, so uh, some of these things, it's just a good idea to have in place uh, before you get ready to sell. Um, you know, so, uh, and on the flip side there, you know, I, I mentioned a fire sale. You know, the fire sale is where you're going to have to sell quickly. You really didn't have time for prepared. It's just you're going to try to sell as is. Um, you know, it's very tough to get maximum dollars out, out of your business uh, in a fire sale. Um, you know, I just don't, I really don't know what else to say about that because it, it's really difficult. You know, you get into a situation where you have to sell, um, you know, just because of uh, life gets in the way. Uh, but, 
The, the one thing that I, I can say, there's a couple of different alternatives. You know, you could sell your entire company to one person, uh, one investor, or what you may think about is uh, start selling just individual accounts. Uh, the one place you always should uh, look at is look at your competitors to buy your accounts or buy your business. You know, that's why I stress so much that it's so important for us to know our competition and to build some strate uh, strategic uh, alliances. Because when the time comes, who better would you go to to have them buy your business than your competitor? You know, they, they, if they want to increase market share, that's one easy way for them to do that. So that's, what the, that's one thing that you want to do. In fact, in my second company that I sold, I made one phone call. And that was to my major competitor in my area. Uh, a week later, we were sitting in the president's office. Seven months later, we, we finalized the deal. So... Um, you know, they, that was a matter of them uh, gaining market share. I knew they wanted it, and uh, I had a great product. So, uh, like I say, I made one phone call, and uh, the rest is history. But so anyway, uh, maybe those, uh, maybe these tips will help you. Uh, again, you know, uh, generally just take your your uh, profit uh, with a multiplier of one to three. Uh, that's where the industry's at now. Uh, again, those numbers aren't uh, fixed numbers. Uh, there's variables. Uh, it really depends on a lot of different things uh, once you really get into the meat potatoes of your business. And uh, like I say, these people that are willing to buy, uh, they'll dig deep, uh, you know, and they'll want to uh, have. A, they'll have a lot of questions for you. So be prepared. And uh, you know, many times the uh, business owner often thinks that their business is worth more than it is. So don't be surprised if you think that it's worth, uh, uh, you know, ten million dollars, and somebody only offers you a hundred thousand for it. Uh, you know, many times the the business owner their numbers are so inflated that they uh, they're really they're really off on, on the numbers. Um, so uh, don't uh, don't let that happen to you. You know, uh, think realistic and. Uh, you know, generally, if your uh, you know if your revenue is uh, five hundred thousand per year, then uh, you know you you maybe you maybe will get you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars for your business. You know, uh, again, it's a uh, it's these aren't solid numbers. It's just uh, you know estimates. Uh, there's too many variables, but uh, at least it gives you an idea. Um, and like I say, you do have other options of how to uh, uh, sell your business. You know. Uh, some of you may consider uh, going through a broker. Some of you may consider selling it on your own. Maybe some of you will just hire an attorney. But, uh, you know, whatever route that you take, just make sure it's right for you. Uh, in some of these cases, you're going to have to share the wealth. So uh, if you end up uh, taking a quarter of a million dollars out of your business that you sold it for, well, you're going to lose a chunk of that uh, because you have to pay the fees to your broker or your attorney and so on and so forth. Uh, the other sad fact is that you uh, more than likely will have to pay capital gains tax. Um, <laughs> that can be a big hit, you know, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, it's kind of frustrating because I don't remember seeing anybody in the government out there cleaning toilets and, and working late nights with me, but they sure got their hand out there waiting for you to sell your business so they can collect a, a capital gains tax. But now that's another story. But anyway... Uh, good luck to you, and uh, uh, hopefully everything works out.